Hello friends and welcome to this video. I'm your host, Magic Man Mo. First and foremost, I want to thank all of you so much for the 1600 subscribers. That's what this video is all about. This is the 1600 subscriber thank you video. Thank you so much for, for helping me, uh, for not me, but this channel break the 1600 subscriber mark. It's a mini milestone. We I, I like to do these sort of smaller milestones because like 1600 isn't like, you know, it's not a thousand, it's not two thousand, it's not a gajillion or whatever. It's just a mini milestone and I like doing these and, and thanking you guys along the way because after all, it is all thanks to you for the, like the, I don't, I, I don't know how to like the success of the channel, I suppose, the popularity of the channel, whatever you want to call it, it's all thanks to you. I make the content, but only you guys can hit the subscribe button. I can't, I cannot do that for you. So it's all up to you. And I'm glad that you guys enjoy the content that I make, the, the videos, the streaming, etc. that I make uh, enough to be worth your subscription. Thank you so much. I had a suggestion on a live stream that maybe uh, I should do a Q&A. Uh, so I thought I haven't done one of those in a while, in a little while, and I thought maybe I would pose uh, it up to you guys to ask me some questions for me to answer. So that's what I have open now. I have uh, my community tab open. By the way, for those of you that are watching this, if you're not aware, I do post things to the community tab. So if you go to my channel page, there's a little tab that says community. If you click or tap that, that is where I put posts and you can answer polls and you can comment and you can do stuff there. Uh, and I put, I put a couple of, of, of the posts up asking for questions. So that's what I'm going to do now. First up, I have four different questions from Robexi de la Torres. Thank you so much for your questions. Uh, I'll start with this. Oh, actually, uh, three questions, rather. Well, one, one of them isn't so much a question. It's, it's a thanks for the announcement. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I have a question. What inspired you to be a YouTuber? You know, you th when you think of inspiration, you think of like an artist having like some sort of stroke of genius or something and being suddenly like, oh my god, I have to, I have to paint this now or I have to write this thing now. It was, that wasn't really the, the case for me and YouTube. But what led me to the eventual doing of it, and I, I've, I've, just, I've discussed this before, so if you've heard this before, this will, this will sound familiar, but if you haven't, I left high school and I used to do things in high school I was involved in sports and activities and stuff like that in high school I left high school and I moved on to college and basically all of those hobbies that I used to perform all those things that took up my time were gone and of course I since this is a let's play channel I did play like video games and stuff on my own in my own time and I, I did continue to do that but I felt like I wanted more. Playing video games very much was something that I, I, I could do to like kill the time, but it didn't feel productive in the way that I, I wanted it to. So when you're in a high school sport, if you're like playing a, a sport of some kind, or you're on a team, or you're in a group, or if you're performing some sort of activity, like you're in theater or something, you usually work as a team to uh, achieve some goal. If you're in theater, you know, put on a play. If you're in a sport to practice and win games and that sort of thing, right? playing video games didn't hold that level of achievement for me but then I discovered let's plays on YouTube I'd been watching let's plays for a while I uh, specifically people like the Yogg's cast and like uh, people like the game grumps and two best friends play and and uh, PewDiePie when he was on his rise when you know he was still screaming at Happy Wheels and that kind of thing I I had delved in and learned about the Let's Play world, and I, someone who played games, and I, 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 or I was watching these people, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe I can do that too. Maybe, maybe I, I should give that a shot. It'd give me something to create, you know, creating videos. I just need to learn how to do it. So it gives me something to learn, something fresh and new to do as a hobby, and I threw all kinds of passion into doing it, and along the way, I discovered that I really enjoyed doing it, that it was something I was very interested in doing, and so that's what inspired me to become a YouTuber was was the sort of absence of activities in my life that I used to have and, and the need to feel like I was creating something. And of course with the discovery of, of, of Let's Plays on YouTube, I, I decided maybe I could do that as well. Ultimately, I'm just a big fat cappy, cappy cat? Copycat. I just wanted to do something that other people were already doing and I thought maybe I could learn how to do it as well. And if I do say so myself, I've gotten 
pretty okay at it. I've, I've gotten okay at, at editing and, and recording and commentary, and I'm pretty happy with how far I've come. Okay, I know that was a long-winded first qu answer to a first, the, the first question, but I have others to go. Robexy also asks, where are you from? I am from the United States, uh, Illinois. Illinois, it's in the Midwest of the United States. I don't usually talk about too specific, too many details, but if you do enough digging online, you can figure out that I'm from Illinois in the United States, so I've got that Midwestern accent. Uh, it doesn't sound like one to me, but people have commented on my accent before. Uh, Illinois. Oh, and this one's gonna be a hard question. I have a standby answer for it. What's your favorite game? So this is something that I do get asked quite a bit since I do a Let's Play channel what my favorite game is, and it's really hard to say. I, I have a standby answer that historically, in the past, my favorite game that was, my favorite games that were my foray into video games in general, sort of what got me into video games, what, what, what set me off on that adventure. When it comes to PC gaming, the humongous games. The Spy, Spy Fox specifically, I love Spy Fox, Pajama Sam, Freddy Fish, those games. You've probably seen me play some of them on this channel, in fact, uh, but I always have a, a soft spot for Spy Fox in my heart. Those old point-and-click games on the PC, that's what drew me into PC gaming. I loved those games so much as a child. Uh, on consoles, it's a slightly different type of style of game. I always enjoyed Spyro. Spyro. Spyro the Dragon, Spyro Ripto's Rage, Spyro Year of the Dragon. Those are the original three in the trilogy. Love those games. 3D platformer. That's what drew me into console gaming. Those are the two games that sort of, in my mind, in my childhood, really stand out to me as a child. As I got older, my taste in gaming slowly kind of evolved a little bit. Uh, I, I, as, as an older child, I started getting in, on the PC end of things into Roller Coaster Tycoon. I love tycoon games. Sim City, uh, Sim City 3000. Love those games. The Sims, uh, sort of simulation and, and tycoon style games. Whereas on console, I was slowly starting to develop a taste for FPS. I would play. Uh, what, what were they called? Army men, the green army soldiers, the little plastic army soldiers. The ar I think they were. I think it was called army men. That series, uh, Spec Ops. Uh, I think there was another one. It was like SOCOM. I think was another one. Eventually, Call of Duty. But I got into Call of Duty late in the game. I was playing some of the other ones instead. But on console, FPS started becoming a thing for him. Well, and some of them, uh, uh, third-person shooters as well. But slowly into FPS. Which is kind of funny, so because those two like FPS and shooters on console, and then like the point and clicks and simulators on on PC, it was kind of interesting how my taste, depending on what system I was playing on, changed over time. Nowadays, what's my favorite game now? I don't know what my favorite game is, but the the games that I like to play in my off time that I don't typically play for the channel, that I you know that I play to unwind, relax. I don't have to talk to a camera. I can just chill out are games like Stellaris, games like Civilization 5 and 6, games like uh, uh, XCOM, uh, XCOM 2, those, those sort of strategy style games. I, I, I really enjoy playing on the PC in my own time. I don't play a lot of console games anymore on my own time. Uh, when I do, I, it, it depends on what I feel like. Uh, I, I started playing LA to Wire again a while back just on a whim because I hadn't beat the game before. I played, I've tried to play Witcher 3. I've never, I haven't beat it, but I've played it. Uh, console games kind of, whatever I feel like at the time, but on, on PC, since I spend a lot more time on PC nowadays, it's those strategy games like Civilization. I loved Civilization 5. I put so much time into Civilization 5, and I've really enjoyed Stellaris, Civ 6, XCOM, and XCOM 2. Those are probably my favorite types of games. Right now on the channel, I did a live stream of a Warhammer 40k Mechanicus game that I really enjoyed. I haven't played very much of it, but that seems right up my alley. Those types of strategy games. As far as, like, what is my, like, THE favorite game of all time, I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. It probably depends on the genre, probably. Uh, but I hope that answers your question in terms of the style of games that I play these days on my own. Sluster says, congrats on 1600 mo. Thank you. A question for your Q&A, what was the toughest moment in your life and did YouTube help you overcome it? Toughest moment of my life. I have to be honest with you, my life hasn't been too tough. Uh, I've watched a lot of YouTubers have a lot of hardship in their, in their lives that I don't feel like I came up with. I had a very supporting family, 
I did very well in school, but the lowest point in my life has probably been since leaving high school and having to struggle with direction. A sense of direction. So when you're a kid or when you're in high school or younger and you go to school every day, you kind of have a sense of direction, like you, ha or at least routine, where you do the same thing over and over. You show up, you do your thing, you go home, you do your whatever your hobbies are, and then you go to bed, you show, and then you wake up, you go to school, you do your thing, etc. You have a sort of routine about you. Once you start leaving that environment, and some people leave it earlier than I, than I did, and some people, you know, take longer, but once you start leaving that environment and you're in charge of your own destiny, right? You're in charge of your own routines, you're in charge of your own scheduling. It's all on you. The responsibility is yours. And so between leaving high school and entering college and being in charge of basically my future and the stress and anxiety that that comes with, as well as some other in some other IRL stuff that I haven't talked about on the channel that I, I don't want to talk about on the channel. Nothing too serious, but uh, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm not there yet in my willingness. Willingness. W willingness? Willing? Yeah, I'm saying I'm saying that correctly. It didn't sound right to talk about it. Those were some of my lower points in time, and I would say uh, YouTube helped um, in terms of escapism. Uh, uh, playing video games did as well. Video playing video games were a source of escapism, but I w leaving high school, there was a whole new genre of YouTube video in Let's Plays for me to discover, and that sort of discovery, learning new YouTubers, uh, exploring new games through YouTube that I didn't own, and, and getting to know people on YouTube, uh, or at least uh, me getting to know other people, no one, no one getting to know me. I was not someone who left comments and stuff on videos, I just, I was a passive watcher and observer. Um, it helped me through that, it helped me escape rough days, I would say, but nothing, nothing traumatically similar or singular nothing traumatically singular no single hardest moment in my life but those were some of the roughest times it was making that transition until into um realizing that i am in charge of me and other people aren't in charge of me and making that transition and one more question because i'm dying to know how long have you been wearing fedoras you look very stylish mo oh let me grab my fedora it's right it, oh god, I just I th flung it at my head and missed my head. My fedora. I am glad you think it's oh god. I'm glad you think it's I'm gonna wear it backwards. I'm glad you think it's stylish. I'm glad you think my fedora is stylish. <laughs> but um I don't know when I started. It's probably been it's probably been like two years ago now. I don't uh probably I, I have periodically tried to do you love this? Do you? This is my new look now. Do you like my new look? It even sits just below my glasses. But I started wearing fedoras a year or two ago, um, especially with the Hawaiian shirt that I'm not wearing. It's over there right now. I've tried doing other looks. So the idea with the fedora thing, um, because when I first started doing YouTube, I didn't have a look that I was going for. I, I didn't have a gimmick like like the hat or anything. I just, whatever I was wearing is whatever I was wearing, no big deal. Eventually, while I was editing my videos and looking what I looked like, I, I started wanting to look more presentable in videos as opposed to just whatever, you know, hair, not comb, beard, whatever. I wanted to start looking more presentable for videos, and so I started working on that slowly. It was a slow process for me. And eventually I started thinking, you know, maybe I should have the same kind of getup, some, something similar to, like, look like, to have a style, to have some sort of fashion style about me. And that slowly started becoming, well, maybe I should have uh, a uniform or a costume or something. And I started thinking, well, I'm Magic Man Mo. And I used to, the reason I'm called Magic Memo, the magic part is because I used to perform magic for like friends and family and, and, and whoever I, when I was younger. And I had a sort of magic get up, so I, I, I was wearing black. I, I went with a suit. I decided like, okay, well, stage magicians, uh, historically, not so much anymore, would wear like a suit, formal clothing. So I'm like, okay, I'll wear like a suit or whatever. I have a suit, so I'll wear a suit or something. And I did that for a tiny bit of time while I was experimenting with doing a costume, a uniform, but it was too dark. It was too, the clothing was too dark, and the way I used to do face cam, I didn't have green screen. With, the, with my background, with the way my room was and everything, it didn't work. 
but I still kept thinking I wanted to have that sort of uniform costume idea to sort of stand out amongst other Let's Players. It was kind of, it was kind of both. It was kind of, I, I think it, the presentation would make my videos visually better, but then also I wanted to stand out so that people would remember who I am if you accidentally came across one of my videos on YouTube, like, oh, I, I like watching the guy with the insert blank. Well, I went through some of my clothing, I went through some of my things, I had the fedora, I had the Hawaiian shirts, and I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> Because I figure no one I know of is wearing fedoras and Hawaiian shirts as a Let's Player. No one that I knew of at the time. I don't. I still don't know if there's other people that do that. I have seen occasionally a fedora worn on Let's Plays uh, now. I've occasionally seen that pop up, but not necessarily the Hawaiian shirt with the fedora combo. But at the time, I, it was completely unique to me. I went with it, and some people seemed to like it. I was very worried about people not liking it or making fun of the look, but for the most part, I think people enjoy it, and I've been sticking with it on and off. Sometimes, I, like you can tell, sometimes I don't wear the Hawaiian shirt, sometimes I don't wear the hat, but for the most part, I stick with it, and uh, I think it stands out. I, th I think it's a unique look that you don't get to see from most Let's Players. Next question from Harley's Vlogs. Will you ever go to VidCon or Comic-Con? I have no current plans to go to a convention of any kind right now, but that doesn't mean I won't ever in the future. I have a friend who uh, attends Gen Con like every year, and he enjoys it quite a bit. He's recommended that it, it, like I and other friends go, um, and I would like to. I would like to one day, but for the time being, I don't like taking time off of work. I don't like spending a lot of money. I'm very thrifty. I don't like spending money, so I haven't wanted to spend money at a convention that I have to go take off time from work to go to. So I haven't really wanted to or had the desire to. But one day, one day I, I might, I may, it's quite possible. Lots of people seem to enjoy them, but I, I have no current plans to. Um, but yeah. This next question comes from Abby Brooks. If you could do any other kind of videos besides gaming, what would you do? I have an answer to that, believe it or not. <laughs> Uh, for starters, I, for those of you that don't know, I do have another YouTube channel, but I upload to it kind of infrequently or sporadically. But if you're interested, I do have another YouTube channel. There is a link in the description below if you would like to check that out. It's sort of a vlogging type channel. It's, it's just called Weston Hasty. That's my real name for those of you that don't know. It's just called that, and you can check it out. I post videos about me running or random videos or whatever. I have more content planned to come to that eventually, but it's not high on my priorities list. That's why it's kind of infrequent or sporadic. So I do have another kind of vloggy type channel. But if I wasn't doing gaming at all, I wouldn't be doing vlogging as my focus. Vlogging is not my focus. I would like to do an education channel of some kind. And I've never been able to settle on exactly what that education channel would be, but I've always had a fascination with the idea of, of, of in my head, I call it non sequiturs. So the idea is that I present to you an idea in the beginning of the video and teach you things about that stuff that kind of rabbit holes to a final idea, but all along the way you're learning things. So it's, it's an education channel, not in the sense of like, um, like, like a class that you would take at school, but um, kind of random bits of information that are bookended by major ideas, major themes that I try to tr try to um, deliver a message through, if that makes sense. Think almost like, not exactly, not exactly, but think something that's almost kind of Vsauce style. Think of that, and you're getting closer to what I've always thought of. And... And, uh, that might be happening one day, I, I want to say one day soon, but honestly I don't know when. It's something that I've had in the back of my mind, I'm currently in the sort of, the, the sort of planning stages of it, and I've been dragging my feet on this a lot, I'm in the planning stages of it, but I've been thinking about making that happen sometime in the near future, is doing a, a, a style of video that way. I don't know if I'll be committed to it, honestly, it's gonna be more work than making Let's Plays, typically it, well, yeah, that's fair. That's <laughs> more work per video than Let's Plays um, are. Let's Plays have, do, do, have a different amount of work that go into them than other types of videos. It's, it's interesting. That might be a topic for another time. But it would be a video, it would be a channel that would release videos like once every month or maybe once every two weeks or something like that. Not nearly as frequent. And I haven't decided yet though if the pilot 
episode, the beginning episode, if I'll air it on Magic Man Mo or on my Weston Hasty channel, just to see how it goes. Uh, but I, ha I have an idea kicking around in the, in the back of my head. But to answer your question more thoroughly, what I would be doing if it wasn't Let's Plays is I would be wanting to teach people things on YouTube. So it would be some sort of education-based learning type channel thing. Here is what I would be doing if not this. Louis Marsden asks, what, what's your favorite sauce? What is my favorite sauce? Um, of course, in general, in general, like on the, the, it goes well on pretty much anything. You can't beat the magic, the majesty that is ranch. I mean, just ranch can go on anything. You can put ranch sauce on anything and it works. Anything. Anything. I'm not... I'm not, you might, in your head, you're thinking, oh, he means some things, or he means most things. I know, anything, literally anything, and it works great. But I also like, I like spice and flavor, so a good, like, Southwest, a good Chipotle, or maybe a spicy barbecue is the way to go. I like spicy sauce. I don't necessarily mean melt your face off sauce, because, you know, that that's fun every now and again, but in general, a kind of a spicier spicier than mild type barbecue or southwest sauce is always really fun too and i'm always keeping my eye out for interesting sauces if i go out to eat or if i'm at a gathering of some kind if there is an item that i can put sauce on i'm looking for an interesting sauce to put on if there isn't something interesting i'm just like oh, i'm just trying to chill out trying to relax and you know, i'm having some sort of sandwich or something ranch is pretty easy that's the way to go i don't have a specific favorite sauce just like ranch is my go-to but if there's something interesting available, I like going for interesting, and I like going for new, and I like to introduce new sauces to my palate. I hope that kind of, kind of answers your question right. Figo asks, I don't think he's asking me, I think he's asking everyone else, do you wonder if Magic Man Mo actually is magic? Dun dun dun! <laughs> well, let's put it this way, if I had magical powers, I wouldn't want to put them on screen because then the government might come after me f to learn how I do it. I have to stay in hiding. I can't reveal to you what I'm capable of. Otherwise, people will find me. Or has a question, um, or a, uh, a couple really. What other YouTube channels do you watch the most? I don't know what I watch the most of, but I a smattering of a bunch of stuff. Lately here, I've been watching, um, a lot of uh, SciShow, I've been watching a lot of uh, Because Science, um, I watch a lot of, uh, uh, well, those, those are two sort of information based, I also watch like a lot of, uh, uh, lately I've been watching a lot of like, Yogg's Cast videos, uh, Trouble in Terrorist Town, Minecraft stuff like that, I've been kind of, read. I, I, I watch a lot of them in the early days of YouTube, and then I took a long break and then I'm kind of coming back, um, occasionally some Game Grumps, occasionally some Markiplier. Um, occasionally some just random videos from uh, people that I'm not super familiar with will pop up on my timeline. I've got my phone out. Um, I've been watching a lot of Critical Role Campaign 1 for D&D. &D. Uh, I'm almost through Campaign 1. I've been spending a lot of time watching that and catching up. Uh, because a long time ago I started to watch them and then I stopped. But now, now that all of Campaign 1 is out, is out I've just been binging all of that. But yeah, uh, I'm just opening up my YouTube, I see the, the Grumps, Game Grumps, uh, uh, Yogg's Cast, Extra Credits I've been watching a little bit of. Sometimes I forget who I watch until I open YouTube. I've been watching Cyanide and Happiness. I always watch a new episode of Cyanide and Happiness. Mm, I haven't watched any Jesse Cox in a while. He just posted something. I need to watch more Jesse Cox. Philip DeFranco pops up. I don't watch every single ep uh, upload of his, but for a while I was, so that was a popular thing for a while. Uh, that's someone I've never heard of. That's a Vivo channel. Uh, <laughs> Tom Scott is one that I like watching. He's got, uh, uh, he's got, He's got a fun series of like uh, places you've never been or, or whatever. He's got some he's got some good videos and they're short. Tom Scott's got uh, short videos. They're always interesting. I like watching his stuff. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of random stuff. A lot of random stuff on here. Um, but yeah, pretty much anything that comes my way that kind of strikes my fancy. Are there any uh, TV shows, films, or books that you have recently seen and really liked? The weird thing about doing Let's Plays on YouTube is that because you're trying to produce a lot of content, you're trying to release every day, and because you're constantly playing games, pardon me, because you're constantly playing games for your content, sometimes you get a little wiped out from like, um, 
playing video games and you would think that I would like maybe unwind by by watching some TV or movies or reading books the, the sad the sad truth the sad truth of the matter is that I really don't TV I don't get TV I don't I don't have TV I don't have cable I don't have satellite I do not have TV I didn't want to pay for it when I moved out so I didn't get it <laughs> So no TV shows, uh, films, I have sadly been not watching movies. I, movies come out and I just, I don't go see them. I don't leave, I don't leave my apartment and go watch movies, unfortunately. I think the last movie I watched was, um, uh, uh, what was the Mar- I don't even remember the name of it. Infinity War? Marvel's Infinity War? Because it was on Netflix. Endgame was coming out, so I was like, I'm gonna watch Infinity War. I still haven't seen Endgame. I think that was the last movie I watched was Infinity War. It might be. I rewatched uh, um, uh, Monty Python's uh, Search for the Holy Grail. I rewatched that. That's not a new movie. Books. I have been sadly not reading books, but I do occasionally read poetry. Do I have a? Uh, what's the name of the one I have? I have a few. Po I have a few poetry books. I can't think of their names right now that I'm reading right now but I, I read poetry from time to time if I do read stuff I usually look for it online I, I read a, a bunch of random like articles and things online uh, but no specific books and sometimes you know Wikipedia or, or, or whatever if I am watching something it's usually on YouTube or Netflix uh, on Netflix I, I just started watching the second season of Agretzico which so far I'm feeling kind of iffy about like it's not as great as the first season was but that's what I'm watching right now on Netflix and I don't watch a lot of Netflix on YouTube like, like I was just talking about earlier it's a lot of random stuff a lot of random stuff and when I'm not watching YouTube or Netflix I'm usually doing something YouTube related making content for you guys otherwise that's that's about it I wish I could recommend you some interesting good stuff um, maybe a topic for another video maybe I'll make a list of stuff like maybe I'll go through things that I have watched in the past that I really like and make um, Magic Man Mo recommends these 10 anime these 10 action movies these 10 comedies these 10 books maybe I'll, maybe that'll be another set of videos let me know if that's something that interests you maybe I'll do that make a top 10 or some top something list of some things as uh, to suggest I think that might be a, an interesting idea. Last question. It's a fun and silly one to wrap this up from Fabled Doge. Do you ever wonder if Gordon Ramsay just says F it and just microwaves a hot dog? I've got to imagine maybe not. Like, you, you could see as a normal, like, a normal person, like you and me, if you can call us that, uh, you could see how, like, when you don't want to cook, when, you, when you're just, just, just had a long day and you're just like, I want something quick, you can shove something into a microwave. Gordon Ramsay, you gotta imagine too that he's gotta love cooking, right? That's gotta be something he's got a passion for. And I feel like if he did microwave something to do it quick and easy, he would just be disappointed. You know, like, would he even eat it or would he be like, with a little extra time and a little extra effort, I could have made something amazing? Because he's an amazing chef, right? So I don't know if he ever does just say F it and microwaves a hot dog. I don't know if he ever eats a hot dog. <laughs> but microwaves anything? Just quickly? I don't know. It's a really interesting question. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say he has too much class and too much dignity to, to say F it and throw a, throw a hot dog into a microwave. Nope. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. At Gordon Ramsay, if you see this video, I, I challenge you to make a video, because he's got a YouTube channel, make a video and eat a microwaved hot dog and just review the hot dog, <laughs> I guess. All right, this has been a very long q and I've been recording for over half an hour, which for the stuff I make is a long video. Some people take longer to make these videos and good on ya. But this is a pretty long video already, so I think that's going to do it for the Q&A. Once again, thank you guys all so much for 1,600 subscribers. We're already well on our way for 1,700. So if you have an idea for what I should do at 1,700 that isn't a Q&A, please let me know. Because I would like to try to, you know, not do a Q&A every single time. Because they get a little stale after a while. So let me know if you have any other ideas, and we'll see if we can make that happen at the next milestone. 
One last announcement before you guys go. Uh, memberships have updated, so if you're interested in becoming a Magic Man Mo member, I'm thinking about calling you guys like Mighty Magical Members or something like that. Something that's the MMM. Um, <laughs> the, you know, like Magic Memo, so like Mighty Magical Members or something, like, like as a name for members of the channel. Uh, members, for those of you that don't know, are what you become if you hit that little join button down below and uh, pay a monthly subscription to the channel to help support the channel. And those have all updated. I have updated all of them. I have introduced new prices. It used to be the only way to do it is a $5 a month uh, tier. Now there are five tiers, a $1, $2, $5, $10 and $20. The 10 and 20 are for crazy people. I don't know why you do that. I don't know why you would send me that much money, but it's an option. <laughs> and depending on what you uh, subscribe to, if, if what which one you choose, if you do, uh, there are different perks associated with that. And you can check out all that information by hitting that join button down below. Don't worry, if you click on it, nothing bad happens. You can read the information there. And if you don't like what you see, just back out, hit that little cancel button, and nothing happens. And if you do like what you say, well, I appreciate whatever you decide to choose. But basically, there's a, I wanted to make cheaper options for those of you that $5 a month was a little too steep for you. If you don't do any of those, don't worry. I won't love you any less than I already do. I appreciate your support. There are so many ways to support the channel for free. Just watching the videos is a great one. Of course, liking, of course, sharing with your friends is the best way to spread the news and information about the channel. All that stuff, leaving comments, uh, basically creating an active community. Uh, that's the best way to do it, and yeah, that's all for free. But I wanted to announce that memberships have updated because it used to just be the one thing. Now there's five things. All the perks are updated. It's all great. I like it. It's all based on my Patreon information. If you've never checked out my Patreon, um, if you don't, if you've always thought about supporting me on Patreon but didn't like Patreon, now you can do it through YouTube, and it's basically the same perks. Check it out. See for yourself. That's going to do it for this video. Once again, thank you all so much for 1,600 subscribers. I appreciate it. Whatever you guys do, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, wash your hands. Bye.